Hi. Okay. I'm a little bit excited about this. Um, my husband and I really like um, caramel macchiatos and mocha lattes. And so if you like those in the morning, um, it, it can get a little bit expensive going to Starbucks every morning or um, Dutch Brothers or wherever you get your favorite coffee. And they're usually about what five dollars a piece so i've come up with a fun way and we don't do it all the time we still go out on our date and get you know go to starbucks or go to uh, dutch brothers and get our little drinks but a lot of times it's just fun to do this plus it's healthier and i'm going to tell you why but before we get into the recipes get yourself some things that you're going to need to make this um get yourself some paper to write your recipes down but a few of the things that I use and, and they're pretty handy to find are first of all I have pure peppermint extract and this is the extract that I use I get McCormick's um, nice it's nice it's just alcohol water and the oil of peppermint and so that's one thing you're gonna need um, the other thing you might need when you make your espresso is this is a mesh strainer and this is a perfect size because I'll have two of these and I strain the coffee out, the coffee grounds out of one into another one. And so this is very handy to have. The other thing you're going to need are some something. It, I, you might want to use canning jars. I have a lot of canning jars I used to can. So I have a lot of canning jars and I use them for all kinds of purposes. But I have the quart one. It's four cups the big one and it's a wide mouth it has the big wide opening and then i have some jelly jars and these are probably maybe a cup each um and then they have the smaller uh, openings now it doesn't matter what opening you have it'll work with if you have the balls that have the small openings it'll work with those too so that doesn't matter but the other thing that i have that are kind of cool when you buy canning jars they come with a flat lid flat metal lid that you put on with a little rubber gasket and then you tighten it with a metal ring that holds the lid down um i don't use those except when i'm canning because you can't use these with a canning uh a canner but I don't reuse them a lot of times sometimes the screw one I will use but I really like these because I make salves and all kinds of things that I use my jars with and these are bowl also and what's nice about them is they're reusable you can put them in the dishwasher you can wash them by hand but they have a, a small mouth which fits the jelly jars just perfectly so when you make your syrups this is what I put mine in if you just have plastic wrap and you just have a cup and that's fine too don't you don't have to get real fancy um this is just fun this is something over the years i've collected and then on my wide mouths i have a wider mouth one and then these are reusable and i'm all into reusable <laughs> i'm cheap i spend all my money but i'm cheap and then they come like this they're called a ball plastic storage caps this is the wide mouth they have the narrow narrow mod but they come in eight reusable plastic storage caps and again what i like about these is you can throw these in the dishwasher and once you've used them and use them over and over and over and over and over again okay now that we have talked about that let's talk about the recipes so if you don't have an espresso machine um, I say good for you. You've already saved yourself anywhere from 80 to 250 on up for the machine itself. It's just as easy to cold press. And let me explain cold press. If you've ever made sun tea, you've done a cold press. And all it is is putting water in a jar and putting your tea bags in and letting it sit. You don't even have to put it in the sun. You can just sit it on your counter or in your fridge and, and the tea will just leach into the water. The nice thing about that when you cold press things is sometimes with our um, coffees and our teas, they have impurities in them. Um, just like rice has, what is it, um, arsenic in it you can wash a lot of it out but if you cold press you're not getting that in your water so much when you hot when you hot cook something it leaches a lot of things into your water that maybe you don't want so cold pressing is really a nice way to go and you can use this to make yourself a cup of coffee in the morning just heat it up boil it i will suggest that once you have made your um, espresso 
the way we're going to do it. Every time you drink it, boil it because again, the coffee beans are not pure and they may carry any kind of bacteria. And so when you're cooking them in a regular cooking processor, you know, a coffee maker or whatever, you're killing that. But if you cold press it, you're not. So you do want to make sure you boil. I boil mine. I, this is the first thing I boil after when I'm making my coffees. Okay. So we know about cold press. Let's go ahead and I'll show you how we're going to make our espresso. This is for the basic espresso. I'm not sure if that's how it's spelled, but it is for me. <laughs> okay, so this is four cups. Generally, I will fill this to two cups of water and cold water. Use cold water. And then I will put about a one half of a cup of finely ground coffee in here. And it only comes up to about here. It doesn't fill it the whole way. I have done it the whole way, but it's a lot harder to shake up your beans and, you know, get them mixed up very well. So once you do that, go ahead and put your lid on and hold it tight and then shake it a little bit. Put it in your refrigerator. I shake it a couple times through the, through the evening. I usually make it like you want to let it set for at least 12 hours before you start using it so that the coffee has time to go ahead and, and cold brew through the water. But you can shake it a couple times. If you shake it, you'll get a better flavor. You know, you'll get more flavor, actually, because then it breaks up the coffee again and lets it, it doesn't settle. If it settles down in the bottom, you're not really getting water into those coffee grounds. But go ahead and shake it up and then put it in your fridge for about 12 hours. Um, that's the basic espresso. Again, when you use it in our recipes, go ahead and measure it into a, a pan and just turn the heat on and let it boil. You don't even have to let it boil very long because once it's boiling, then you turn your heat down and we start putting our syrups and things in. Okay, so that's that. If you like a chocolate mocha, I have a chocolate sauce, chocolate some people call them syrups. Um, the nice thing about the syrups, just like the coffee being cold brewed, if you buy syrups in the store, such as uh, they have Tarani, they have Giardelli, they have Hershey's, has a chocolate syrup, they have a butterscotch syrup too. But when you buy those, those are full of high fructose corn sweeteners. Now, I have an allergy to corn, so I don't like corn. I try to stay away from corn as much as possible, otherwise I'm sick. So if you, or... The other thing with high fructose is it's very fattening. It's what they use to fatten up calves. So if you use high fructose corn syrup, you're really not doing your body any good. Sugar isn't the best thing, but it's a lot better than high fructose corn syrup. So we use to make our chocolate, if you want to call it syrup or sauce, it doesn't matter. Um, always remember to make your sauces on a medium low heat. And the reason is when you cook sugar with a liquid, um, it can turn hard. If you cook it too high for too long, it will just actually solidify. It'll get hard, like hard candy, hard tech candy, peppermint candies, those kind of things. That's how they make it. So you want to do what we call a low tack. And that is done by using medium low heat for a short time. So that's the next thing you want to remember. In order to make the syrup, I take one half cup of sugar and one quarter cup of cocoa. And you can use the really dark cocoa. You can use um, Dutch process, whatever you like, just make sure it's, it's cocoa. I like the dark cocoa. I use that a lot. And then when you put these together in your pan, just mix them around with your spoon until you get it kind of mixed together. The other thing that you want to think about is just a pinch of salt. 
And the reason we use a pinch of salt is salt kind of cuts, cuts the sugar so it's not so sickening sweet. It's not enough to make it taste salty. And when we say pinch, it's just a very light pinch. You don't go in there and grab a whole bunch and throw in there. You just do a little pinch and throw in there. And what that does is it breaks up the sweetness. You'll still taste the sweetness, but it won't be so sickening. So a pinch of salt, and then you want to mix all of these together and once you've done that, I add my one teaspoon of um, vanilla. And I, you can't really mix it in because you don't have enough, but I just kind of mix it a little bit. And then I add one quarter cup of cold water. So before I start heating this, I kind of mix the cold water into the sugar, cocoa, salt mix. Okay, now you want to turn your heat to a medium low and stir constantly. And it only takes about a minute. You just do this for about a minute. And pretty soon you'll see that everything has mixed together and you're ready to go ahead and pour it into your um, little jelly jar or if you want to use a cup with a with a piece of plastic rope go ahead don't you don't have to get fancy but if you have these or you can get them at um, goodwill or something go ahead and get some they're really kind of fun so once you've made your chocolate sauce i don't put my lid on tight because as this cools it will tighten up this lid so i just kind of let it on the top and i put it in my fridge to cool okay so we've gone through the basic espresso, our chocolate sauce. Let's show you how to make an espresso uh, mocha latte. Here, let me put these up here so that you can write them down. And if you need to turn your um, your video off so that you so that it just stays there, go ahead and do that. This is your basic espresso espresso, and this is your chocolate sauce chocolate syrup. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do once we have these two, and, and it only takes these two things to make a mocha latte. Let's put that up here, a mocha latte. Okay, now what I do, if you have just made your chocolate sauce, you can leave, you know, uh, once you pour it out, there's always a little bit in there. So before you wash it, you can just go ahead and start making a latte or you know, if you have a clean pan, go ahead and do your clean pan. But again, like I said, when I make my espresso, I like to boil it first. I like to turn it on until it just starts to boil because it will kill, if there's any kind of um, bacteria or anything from the coffee beans, it'll kill it. So you wanna go ahead and put two ounces of your espresso that we just made and um, this is kind of cool. It has eight ounces. This would be four ounces. But you can also get shot glasses, a little shot glass that has markings on it that say one ounce. And I don't know if it's a tablespoon. You kind of have to figure that out for yourself. I'm not good with that. Anyhow, you use two, two ounces of our freshly made espresso. Put that in and turn the heat on, let it boil while you get everything else together. And then after that's boiling, you can turn your heat down and put in one cup of milk. And we've used this with almond milk, oat milk, and just regular milk. So it's up to you what kind of milk you want. And then I use one to two tablespoons. Generally, I use two tablespoons of our chocolate sauce or syrup, whatever you want to call it. And then I just heat it until it's heated through and pour it into a cup and you're ready to have a mocha latte. So let me hold that up and you can go ahead and kind of write that down. Stop your video if you need to and restart it again. Okay, that's a mocha latte. Um, the other thing that we're going to make is a peppermint syrup. And that's my recipe for peppermint syrup. Now, again, when you make peppermint syrup, you want to keep, or sauce, whatever you call it, you want to keep it on a medium low because you do not want this to do a hard crack and turn into hard candy. You want this to say a soft syrup. So always do a low. Um, to start this, I take one cup of sugar and I use white sugar. 
And then in that, I add one half cup of cold water. And I, I do cold water because it it's going to start heating up. And then I put this over my medium low heat. What you'll see is this looks a little bit cloudy when you put these two things together in your pan. And you have to boil this real low boil for about one minute. And then it will get clear. And once you've done that, you can take it off the heat and add one teaspoon of your peppermint extract. And then just stir that in real good and then you're ready to pour it into your your glass um this will keep about a week we we use ours pretty fast so we use it up within a week um, this i think the chocolate sauce you can keep just a little bit longer so you might want to keep that in mind when you go ahead and make this okay that's your mocha latte and every once in a while i will put some peppermint syrup in my mocha latte it makes it taste wonderful it's really good um, I'll try and make another video sometime to make some caramel sauce. I do have a recipe for like a, a caramel sauce. If you like the, um, let's see, it's Dutch Brothers has a, a caramel macchiato and that's really delicious. Okay. Um, I hope this has been helpful. I hope you've enjoyed it. Oh, the one thing that I do when I, when I am ready to separate my water from my my coffee grounds I have two of these I'll have the one that has the coffee grounds and then I'll have a fresh one I use this I put it in here and I will shake it up first and then I will start to pour and you'll see the water will start to come through but some of the coffee grounds will get stuck in here and it'll start to clog up your little your little uh, mesh filter so then you can take a spoon or you can even take your fingers and just start pressing press real hard against the side and keep pressing until you can't get any more liquid out then throw this in the garbage and pour again until you've used up all of your water and then this just goes in the fridge and again it's just really great for espresso okay i hope this has helped you i hope you'll have fun with this it's it's really a lot of fun to kind of make your own you feel like a, a, a barista <laughs> my husband calls it my witch's brew so i kind of like that it's kind of cute it's different um so go ahead and enjoy making these and have a lot of fun with it we'll have some more recipes up later thanks for joining me i'll see you again bye bye